Ciao amici and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be showing you how to bake the perfect pizza at home. But before we start, we're going to need to get the oven situated. What I have is my oven set at 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which is as hot as my particular oven goes. Very important on the inside of my oven though, I've taken the oven racks and I've set one rack in the top of the oven at the highest point that I can sit it in there. And then I've taken the second rack and I've placed it directly in the middle. On each of my racks, I've placed a pizza stone or a pizza steel. In my particular oven, I've got a pizza stone on the top rack and I've got a pizza steel on the middle rack. This is going to ensure that I've got an even heat source on top and bottom of my pizza. And as the pizza bakes, it's going to give me a very consistent bake. This is very important because if you don't have a pizza stone or steel or have your oven set up in this manner, you may notice that the top of your pizza, especially the cheese, is going to be very brown and blistered before the pizza crust is ever baked fully. By using this method, we're gonna have a beautiful, crispy brown crust and a nice baked top layer. Let's get this oven closed and let's head over here to the counter. If you've watched my previous videos on making my classic pizza dough for your home, you'll have already had your dough in the refrigerator overnight. So when you're ready to use that dough, it's really important that you remove the dough from the refrigerator at least 90 minutes before we use it. I've already got mine sitting on the counter here and it's been out for at least 90 minutes so it's perfect and ready for us to use. Let's talk about prepping our ingredients. You've also made my pizza sauce recipe for at home and I've got that pizza sauce right here. I don't want to use my pizza sauce directly out of the cold refrigerator. The difference in temperature between the ice cold pizza sauce from the refrigerator and this now warm pizza crust that we're about to stick in a 500 degree oven is going to be too much difference and it's going to create humidity directly below the layer of sauce. By doing this, if you have cold sauce and you top it on top of your pizza and go into the oven, the bottom crust of your pizza is going to look like it's almost raw or gummy. So what I suggest is take your pizza sauce out of the refrigerator at the same time that you take your dough out. This will allow the sauce to warm up a little bit and it'll be at the perfect temperature for you to bake your pizzas. I'm going to place this off to the side as well. The next thing that I'm going to have to do is prepare my mozzarella. The mozzarella that we're going to be using is whole milk mozzarella. There's a lot of different mozzarella types on the market. You can get part skim, you can get whole milk. If you get your mozzarella already shredded, you can get a combination of part skim and whole milk. Sometimes cheeses are smoked, all these different types of cheese. My suggestion to you would be get yourself a really nice piece of whole milk mozzarella and grate it yourself. The reason why I prefer to grate the mozzarella myself is because when you go to the grocery store and buy the mozzarella already shredded, they add an anti-caking agent called cellulose, which is a starch to that cheese. When you bake that mozzarella with the cellulose starch inside of it, the top layer of mozzarella has this appearance almost like looking like plastic. I prefer to use this method of me grating the cheese at home by myself because there's nothing else in it. This also reminds me of when I was a kid because this was my job at home. My mother, my grandmother would be getting ready to make uh, pizzas for us and then somebody would have the job of shredding the mozzarella. And it wasn't just a little bit. We would get a five pound block at a time and then all I would be doing, I like to use the largest holes on my box grater or if you have a food processor and you want to do this like that, that'll also make your life very easy as well. But use the finest hole, I'm sorry, the largest holes that you can find and then go ahead and then just shred this mozzarella on your own. I'm going to put this off to the side. My mozzarella is ready for us to use here. 
The last thing that we're going to need when we stretch our pizza dough is some type of flour. Now, if you can find what's called semola rimacinata, semola rimacinata is durum wheat flour. It's a very heavy wheat, right? And it absorbs a lot of water. The reason why we like to use semola or semolina on our dough is because it'll absorb any excess moisture on the exterior of the dough ball so that when we go and bake that pizza, it'll actually give us a little bit crispier texture to that bite. Semola di macinata is semola flour that's been twice ground and this is going to be very, very fine just like regular flour. You can get yourself semolina which is going to have a little bit more grit to it, just a little gritty. Some people really like the, the way that semolina is on the exterior of the dough because some people like that kind of gritty uh, flavor between their teeth where it'll feel almost like it's crackling. I like to use the method with semola di macinata. If you can't find either one, go ahead and just use regular white flour, whatever you used in your dough, and you'll be just fine for baking. Now, the last thing, in my dough video on making this classic dough and pizza crust at home, I also gave you a way to use the pan method. For pizza pans, there's a lot of different types of pans that are out there. 9 by 13 is traditional half, uh, half sheet pan size. So if you have a pan like this, this one has these, uh, these ridges on the bottom to kind of let some air get through them, make, maybe makes a crispier crust. I don't know, maybe it's marketing. But the idea being that we've got about a one inch uh, side wall here. And then as this proofs up, it's gonna give us a nice thick uh, uh, base and this will be perfect for a pan pizza. I also have another size here, which is a little smaller and uh, a little bit larger. And this one, what I've done, just to show you uh, what it's like, I put a little bit of parchment paper cut the parchment paper to shape the size of my pan and why I like to use the parchment paper as well especially for you out there that are baking maybe in brand new pans the great thing about using parchment paper is that when the pizza comes out of the oven um, it'll release out of the pan very simply and then it's very simple just to take the parchment paper peel it off the bottom of the crust and it's going to be beautiful every single time. We're going to go ahead and use this gray pan for the pan pizza and I'm going to show you some different techniques on how to stretch the perfect round pizza dough by hand and then how to stretch the perfect dough into your pan to make these gorgeous pan pizzas. Let me get set up and I'll be back with you in a minute. When we make a pan pizza, the pan pizza needs to proof a little bit before we'll be able to stretch it all the way to the edges of the pan. So let's start by making our pan pizza first. I've got all of my dough balls here from that classic at home pizza dough recipe on my last video that you saw. I've got all the dough balls in here. What I'm gonna do is take just a little pinch of that semola flour, put it next to my dough ball, and then I'm gonna use a bench scraper or some flat edge to get the dough out of the pan. Out of, I'm using a dough box. If you're using an individually sealed container, you can very easily just dump right either into the flour or in this case, right on top of the, the pan. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take some extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna give this just a small coating on my parchment paper. And then just using my hands, I'm gonna kind of push this all around on top of that paper. Again, the paper is going to ensure that we release very easily out of this pan. Um, we don't really need this. My grandma never used this method, but I think for all of you at home, this will give you really good success. Now that I've got some olive oil here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this scraper and I'm going to scrape this dough just out of the box, just like this. And then I'm going to flip this over into my oil. I'm going to always make sure that my containers, after I'm done using the dough, I want to make sure that my containers are nice and covered because I don't want to get a lot of extra air inside those containers because it will form a skin on that dough. Now, my dough here, I've got some oil on my hands. I'm going to put some oil here like this. And what I'm going to do is starting kind of in the middle of my paper here, 
I'm going to use the pads of my fingers and I'm just going to press the dough flat just like this. Now, if I had to take a guess, this is probably somewhere about, uh, I would say about 400 grams of dough inside of this pan right now. This is going to make us more of a what's called grandma style pizza, which is going to be more of a very thin crust pizza, which is the way that my grandmother made it. Now, if you're familiar with what's also called the Sicilian pan pizza, Sicilian pan pizza is a little bit thicker, about maybe one inch tall. And this dough uh, will, if you put more dough into the pan, you'll have a thicker crust. This is made to be very thin and crispy. You'll notice that as I'm pressing this into the pan, I'm kind of working with my fingers from the edge. I'm trying to press this out as uniform as I can without being too thick in any one spot. I'm also pressing this with my fingers, starting at one end and working to the other. This will get to a point where the dough feels like it's gonna start snapping back at you. This is the gluten telling us that, hey, I'm starting to work a little bit too much and I need to relax. So what I'm gonna do, I've got this dough in this pan just like this. I'm gonna give this one just final go around, all the way around the pan. And then I'm gonna cover this with plastic wrap and I'm gonna let this proof in my kitchen, which is now really warm because my oven is at 500 degrees and it's preheated. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna leave this to proof on the counter somewhere near the oven so it's in a warmer spot and it'll raise really quickly. I'm gonna get some plastic wrap just like this and I'm gonna make one nice little layer right on top. And then I'm just gonna take that plastic wrap and I'm gonna push it right onto the dough. I don't wanna give this any opportunity for that dough to get um, air to it because it will leave a dry spot on that crust. We're gonna pre-bake this with tomato sauce on it, so I'm really not that worried about air getting to it. But if you were gonna be just leaving this with a little bit of olive oil, maybe some sea salt, that sort of thing, and make almost like just a flatbread out of this, um, it, you would be able to see that crust. I'm just gonna leave this like this now. It's gonna, it's stretched almost all the way to the edges of the pan. After this is proofed, we're gonna stretch it one more time, which will get us all the way to the edges. And then we're gonna show you, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna finish this. I'm gonna put this in a warmer spot in the kitchen. My oven is going right here. It's really nice and warm. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna set it off to the side. My pan has a lid on it, right, like this. I can take this lid just like this and put it here. But if the kitchen or the area where you're proofing at is too cool, it'll proof a little bit longer. It'll take a little bit longer to proof in the pan just like this. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna turn this upside down. You'll notice that I have these beautiful uh, uh, countertops that are made of stone. If I was to put this pan right on the cold countertop, it's gonna take even longer to proof. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna elevate it off or you can get yourself maybe a wood cutting board or something like that and we're gonna raise this up. This is one little trick that'll cause this pan to raise or proof a little bit faster. I'm gonna take this just like this by having the plastic wrap right on top. Now we've got the warm air from the kitchen hitting the dough really quickly and it'll cause the top to raise a little bit higher as well. So this is gonna go right into a warmer area in the kitchen in my case, right next to the oven, and we're gonna leave this to rest just like this. We're gonna come back in about 45 minutes, and I'm gonna show you how we stretch this one last time, and we're gonna get this ready for baking. Join me in a few. My dough has now been rested for 45 minutes, and this is the perfect time for us to go ahead and give this crust a second stretch. This second stretch is critical because it'll allow us to get to the edges of this pan and we won't have to do any extra work from there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off the riser. I had it up on this riser so that the stone counter wouldn't um, keep the bottom of this crust cold. It's gonna cause it to proof faster, which is what we want. I'm gonna remove this layer of plastic wrap. And now with just the pads of my fingers, I'm gonna start on one edge and I'm gonna press to the other. Now I want you to remember that we've got 
this layer of parchment paper underneath the crust so that this way when we come out of the oven it'll release very easily without a lot of extra work. I can feel this dough feels really nice. It's really soft. I don't want to press an edge onto this crust. If you're one of those that wants a little bit of a handle on the edge of this crust, you can push this uh, from the middle to the outside and it'll start to work its way up the pan like this. I'm not a big fan of this because I feel that it gets a little bit too overbaked. If you're one of those people that likes kind of like that breadstick texture to the edge of your crust, go ahead and do it like this. But what I would rather have is the crust sitting uniform, which would give the opportunity of the cheese to melt to the sides of the pan, along with that tomato sauce, which will give us kind of that beautiful kind of charred look to our pan pizza, and that's my favorite. I'd rather have that charred edge with that crusty sauce on the edge of the pan than that handle or that lip on the edge of my dough any day. My grandmother would have uh, probably stopped uh, probably half an hour ago, pushed this one more time, and her pan would, uh, pizza would have never been all the way to the edges. It would have been just a little bit short of the corners, but I love these razor sharp corners that this is gonna have. And then just like that, our pan is completely done. So now it's time to top our pizza. I'm gonna get some of that tomato sauce that we prepared. I'm gonna give this a nice stir just to make sure that that salt hasn't settled onto the bottom of this sauce. Since this is the pan pizza and we don't have to worry about the sauce rolling over the edges, it's really up to you how much sauce you like or don't like. This is, if, you want, if you're one of those people that likes a saucier pizza, this is probably your best opportunity to do so because we've got this really thin crust and then we've got the uh, protection of the edge of the pan. What I'm gonna do is just kind of scoop like this into these layers, kind of scooping forward. And I think this is gonna be good. Maybe a couple more spoons here and then we'll check our work. So what I'm gonna do is kind of go all the way around and kind of just push the sauce to almost the edges. I'm gonna to try to leave a border of about one finger's width from the edge without any sauce. And what'll happen is as this sauce is melting into the cheese, the cheese will kind of spread and push it to where it's gotta go. If you really want to exaggerate it and you wanna push the sauce and, and spread the sauce all the way to the edge of the pan, go ahead and be my guest. You're gonna get a little bit more of that charred, burnt look on the edges. But in my opinion, the pan pizza is one of those pizzas that is phenomenal. The messier, the better, and I love that. We have in Chicago a couple historic places that, uh, that, that make this style of pizza like this. And uh, the famous D'Amato's Bakery is an old coal-fired pizzeria and uh, bakery, actually. And they make all kinds of uh, sheet pan pizzas and bread and cannolis and all that stuff. But that's always one. This style of pizza, kind of messy and charred up around the edges, always reminds me as a kid of getting the treat of going to D'Amato's maybe on a Saturday or Sunday uh, uh, morning and then bringing home that pizza and finishing it home in the oven. This looks great to me. So just like this, our sauce is on our uh, crust and it looks just the way my grandma would done it. Now I've got some of that mozzarella. This is whole milk mozzarella that uh, I shredded with my box grater. And the same thing, we're gonna spread this around the edges. I'm gonna try not to go too far over the edge of sauce. You'll be able to see the sauce line. And I wanna be able to see the sauce peeking through this cheese. So if you're one of those people that likes a really heavily topped pizza with a ton of cheese, go ahead and do so. You're gonna notice that towards the end of the, the bake, that cheese is gonna be all the way up to that um, rim of that pizza. You're gonna see a little bit more caramelized, but the cheese will look less baked. It'll look more creamy and um, oozy, I guess maybe. I don't know, what do you call it? Leave me a message. Let me know what you call that when your cheese looks like that. I'm gonna go around with my fingers just like this, kind of uh, poke around, make sure that my uh, cheese is not too heavy in one particular spot. And then this is ready to go into the oven just like this. If you're one of those people that loves to put things like 
um, raw Italian sausage on top of your pizza or maybe some pepperoni. In my house, it would have been maybe some soppressata or some uh, prosciutto cotto or anything like that. Go ahead and top this pizza however you'd like. Uh, I love uh, beautiful sliced red onion uh, all over the top of this. Uh, maybe with uh, some uh, mushrooms, roasted mushrooms, something like that. That would be beautiful as well. This is ready to go into my oven. I've got my oven set up with a two stone method. I actually have a baking stone on the top rack and then the middle rack where this is gonna sit on top of has a pizza steel and this will be perfect set up and we'll have this beautiful uniform bake. This is probably gonna take us probably about 12 minutes, uh, maybe 14 depending on the, uh, the temperature of those stones. I have my oven set at 500, which is the maximum temperature of my oven. So I'm gonna stick this in the oven and I'm gonna catch you in a minute here. It's been about 14 minutes and my pizza looks amazing. I'm ready to pull it out of the oven. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna place it here on my cooling rack and my dough has actually shrunk just a little bit, but the mozzarella has pushed over the sides and has started to caramelize around the pan. So what I'm gonna do is very gently, I'm gonna kind of chisel away at this a little bit and it'll release from the edge of this pan. And then because we have that parchment paper underneath, this should slide right out, making it very easy to transfer. If you notice that the bottom of your crust still looks a little bit light, you can take this out of the pan and then transfer it right back onto the stone. So easy. Transfer it right back onto the stone and finish it for about maybe a minute and a half, two minutes. It'll get really nice and brown and really crispy on the bottom. I want to check the bottom of my crust to see how we did. Because we have the parchment under here, the parchment will just fall and pull right out and you can see the beautiful color of our crust underneath here. I'm going to pull the parchment out. That simple. Now before I cut this pizza, I want to do a little finishing step to this. I want to take some of that uh, fresh basil that I had. I'm going to stack these leaves up and I'm going to take a, a page from the famous Defara Pizzeria in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm going to use my kitchen scissors and I'm going to kind of just trim this basil right on top, just like this. And this is going to be a beautiful finishing step. And then once we have this all done, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish this with a little bit more Parmesan. This is some beautiful fresh basil right out of the garden. I'm going to take some Parmigiano Reggiano. I'm going to grate this right on top just like this. And you can see the residual heat of this pizza is causing that snowfall of Parmigiano to kind of just melt right on top of that warm mozzarella. And this is what we're looking for, folks. I'm going to transfer this from my cooling rack right onto the cutting board. And then just like my grandmother would do, I'm going to use a pair of scissors and I'm going to cut this. I'm going to cut a pizza like this into six slices. If you want to do them a little smaller, you can always cut them into eight. I'm going to use the scissors. I'm going to cut right down the middle. The thing I love about this method is that pizza and that cheese melting into the pan. And what you have is this result of this crispy layer of mozzarella right here which is always a favorite of mine. If I look into the structure, I can see those bubbles kind of sitting around the middle. This is not very heavy at all. And then I've got that caramelized cheese crust all the way around. And look at the bottom of this. This is beautifully golden brown, everything that we love. Let's try this out. That's so good. This reminds me of the way that my grandma used to make this. The crust is a little chewier than if we were to bake this pizza right on top of the stone. Her pizza was a little softer and chewier, which is exactly like this. The other thing I noticed is that right away, that flavor of that chopped garlic from inside the sauce with those beautiful Italian tomatoes 
And then that little bit of Parmigiano Reggiano is such a beautiful marriage. This to me is the perfect dish. If you're going to be making pizzas at home, I tell you, please try this recipe and then tag me in your photos and let me know how it went. If you have any questions, please be sure to find me on my website, leospaziri.com, or tag me in your photos on social media. My handle is at AskChefLeo. I hope to see you all very soon, and I can't wait to bake with you again. A presto, amici. Ciao. Thank you.